Wilma and Scott. Wilma, lovely to see you. Scott, how are you? Hey, thank you. How has Susan managed to get her tongue round Kirkubrisha? Because it's spelled funnily, isn't it? Yes, it's like, is. It's like Kirkud Bright, isn't yes, it? That's right. Yes. All things bright and beautiful. Yes. How are you, Wilma? Fine, thank you. Good. And you breed ponies and dogs, I believe. That's right, yes. Yes, uh -huh. yes and you have no family? Got one and one on the way. One on the way? <laughs> ah! Isn't that nice, yeah? When is the happy event to be? Oh, not till the end of the year. Not till the end of the year. Well, that thousand pounds would come in handy for yeah, really? providing all those things, wouldn't it? You're going to choose an envelope for us and we'll chatter as we go along. And you're with the Ordnance Survey. Yes, that's right. What are you doing at the moment, Scott? Surveying in the hills in Galloway. What, I mean, we know they're there, don't we? Oh, yes. What, what are you doing well, with them? Well, there's a lot of change, a lot of forestry plantations in the, the hills. And so have you have to, to keep them. keeping an eye yes, on them. Indeed. The hills are alive in Galloway. <laughs> and the blue sheet of paper's on top. Scott, you're going to stay with me. Wilma, go and sit down, relax. You need all the rest you can get, you know, at the moment. <laughs> Scott, we've got three questions for you. And there's that great big 1,000 pounds. Yes. <laughs> Take a deep breath, keep that smile there, and the very best of luck. Oh, we talked about salad last week, and it cost our Liverpool a couple of thousand pounds. Would you believe the first question is about salad this week? If your wife is having lettuce as part of a salad, does she like the outside larger leaves of the lettuce or the inside small heart leaves? You know what I mean? The yes, I do. Crispy, light-coloured ones, or a mixture of both, would she prefer? A mixture of both. I a see. mixture of both, good lad. Second question. If you have a row at home, I'm sure you never do, yeah. about some little domestic problem in which you are both a bit at fault, both a bit at fault, who's generally the one to make it up first? Do you tend to give in and say sorry, or does your wife tend to, to make it up and apologise, or do you just let it linger on until you've both forgetten, forgotten well, about it? I tend to give in. You give yes, in? Yes, I do. Ah, oh, isn't that nice, <laughs> eh? Ah, oh, that's sweet. Your third question. What does your wife look for most in a friend, would you say? Loyalty, a sense of fun, or a helping hand? Sense of fun, I would say. That's important yes. to all of yes, us these is. days, isn't it? Well, you seem very confident about those. <laughs> Have you got time for hobbies? Yes, well, I mostly do hill walking, which is a part of my job, so... Oh, that keeps you, yeah. No I wonder you look so fit and so slim. I get paid for hill walking, so... You're not doing much hill walking, are you, at the moment, young no. and... No. <laughs> the very best of luck, Wilma, with these three questions. And it's about salad again, would you believe? I was just saying we had problems last week. If you're having lettuce as part of a salad, do you like to have just the small heart leaves, you know, the little ones from the inside, or do you prefer to have just the outside, larger leaves, or do you like a sort of mixture of both? Mixture. That's fine, he said that. <laughs> Imagine you've had a little bit of a row at home about some domestic issue. He said you never do. Well, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Which of you tends to sort of give in and make it up first? Are you the one who sort of apologises and makes it up? Or is Scott more generally the one to say, let's forget about it? Or do you let it linger on the argument until you've forgotten it? Scott does. Scott does. Oh, you're doing well. You're doing fine. What do you look for most in a friend? A sense of fun, a helping hand, or loyalty? What's most important, do you think, these days? Loyalty. Ah, no. Yes. What did he say? Yes. Sense of fun. Yes. Never, it's a difficult question. Yes, Scott, always. you may relax yes. now. There goes the chance of the jackpot. But you've got 20 lovely pounds on the scoreboard. How many dogs have you got? Just two. Two. And what are they? A Cocker Spaniel and a Golden Retriever. Mm-hmm. Does he have any, a little nickname, your husband? No, not really. Not, I've got down here, you Just call him Scotty Dog sometimes, but I'm sure yes, that's not that's true, right. is it? Sometimes, or sometimes. Oh, he's Scotty <laughs> Dog, right. If your husband is having some cheese with a cream cracker or some bread, does he put the butter on the bread or the cracker? And if so, does he like butter on his bread or cracker? And if so, does he spread it really thickly, you know, really put it on thick? Or just a fair covering? Or does he use it very sparingly, you know, sort of put it on and scrape it off again? How does he like butter on his bread with cheese or a cracker with cheese? Just fairly. Would Just think. medium, sort of mm -hmm, average, right? Second question. How does your husband generally lace his shoes? Does he lace them straight across or does he crisscross the laces? Or does he generally wear the slip-on type, the more modern ones these days? I think they're crossed. He crosses them. Uh -huh. Crossed. They're crossed. <laughs> I think, he, I think <laughs> you'll be crossed if you haven't got it right. <laughs> If your husband goes into a shop and none of the assistants uh, seem keen to serve him, does he just wait patiently till somebody comes? Does he go up to one of the assistants and ask to be served? Or does he just walk out if they ignore him? What would he do? 
He waits patiently. He's a patient lad, yes, aren't he? <laughs> right, we'll have him back. Has he got any little faults at all you've noticed, then? Too many to mention, yes. Oh, that's a crafty answer. Move along the line, because you've got a chance of 30 more pounds for that uh, wee baby on the way. If you're having some cheese with, with say, a cream cracker or a slice of bread, yes. how do you put the butter on? Do you put it on terribly sparingly on the cracker or the bread? You know, really put it on and scrape it off again? Or just about average, you know, an even sort of bit of butter? Or do you really lay it on half an inch thick? About average, I would say. About average, yes. and that's what she said. That's yes. lovely. <laughs> How do you lace your shoes, Scott? Do you lace them sort of straight across? Do you crisscross them? Or do you wear the slip-ons always? Uh, straight it's across. Straight across. <gasps> she said you crisscrossed them. Now you yeah. can be... Look at that. Straight across. Very straight sorry. across. He's pointing them out now. Very sorry. <laughs> and finally, you go into a shop and none of the assistants seems keen to serve you. You know, they sort of ignore you. Would you just wait patiently? Or would you walk out of the shop? Or would you go up and say, come on, serve me? What I would, would you wait patiently. Wait patiently. Exactly right. Well done. You've got forty pounds now. I've got my little usual bonus here. I've got five nice tenors. Are you going to gamble five yes, of yours? We will. Yes. Right. We'll ask you one question. You've got fifteen seconds to have a little chat and then come up with the answer. Mr. Tony Hatch wrote the signature tune to Mr. and Mrs. and his yes. wife and he sing it on our program. What's his wife's stage name? Tony Hatch and Jackie Trent. Jackie Trent for another fifty pounds. Oh, lovely. Tony and Jackie will be delighted about that. Here comes our Susan. She's carrying the 40 you won, another 50, and your lovely clock. And can we hope that all goes well with the, with the next one? And thanks for coming to see us. Would you say thank you to a nice young couple, ladies and gentlemen? Scott and Wilbur from Kirkubrisha in Scotland. 90 pounds they won. That was smashing, wasn't it? Let's open the curtains again, please. And we will still have that 1,000 pounds to play for. And as ever, a next married couple. Here they are. Now we've got Mr. and Mrs. Holhead from home near Carnforth. They've been married for 20 years. They have two children, and Mr. Holhead works in an office. Connie, nice to see you. Alan, lovely to see you both. Nice to see you. Yeah, you're looking very well, because you live in a nice part of the world, don't oh, you? Oh, we do. Down yeah. at the edge of the Lake District. Yeah, that's right. Home. Definitely. Home. Yeah. I'll bet you say there's no place like... Oh, don't you? <laughs> yes. and, and you're both climbing fans, aren't you? You like a bit of fell walking for fell a climb. Yes. 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 Funny, because our last young fellow was saying he does that as a hobby too. Yes. Do you ever meet when you're out on the hills in the Lake District? Do you meet these people who come very badly prepared, you know, with high heel shoes and slippers and things like that? Yes, on odd occasions. Aye, it's yes. very silly to do that it sort is, of thing. Definitely. Isn't it? Do, you, do you wear the proper footwear and the proper gear? We do try, yes. Good. Yes. Mm. Well, you're going to try right now for a thousand pounds. Could you choose an envelope? Who's choosing? Alan. Nice to see the husband getting the choice for once. <laughs> we'll open this one. Pink sheet of paper on top. Connie, stay with me. Alan, relax in our music box. What about other hobbies, Connie? What do you like doing? Well, we, we uh, play bridge during the winter months. Do, are you uh, members of a club or just no, socially? No, our next door neighbour's a keen bridge player. Just a nice family party, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Right, well, here we go with your three questions and the very best of luck. Jogging is a form of exercise we hear a lot about these days. <clears throat> Has your husband ever gone jogging? Has he talked about doing it but never tried? Or has he never even mentioned it, you know, never considered it? Yes, um, he's done a little. He's, he's been jogging? Uh, only in a down the canal sort of thing. He get his feet not, wet, Not officially, he? with a, you know, with a club. But he has tried jogging. He has tried a, jogging. Right, yes. well, so he's, he's actually gone jogging, that's the answer. Yes, yes. Second question. After drying his hands on a towel, does your husband fold the towel neatly and put it over the rail? Does he throw it over the rail any old way? Or does he just put it down on anything that's handy? What does he do with the towel he in the bathroom? He uh, puts it back neatly. He's fairly neat, rail. that's good. Yes. And the last one. Does your husband carry any family photographs in his wallet? And if so, has he just got the one? More than one or none at all? Um, <clears throat> that's a tough one, isn't it? It is a, making life difficult. Yeah, um, <laughs> life's difficult. Yes. Uh, no, I don't think he has any in his, not in his normal wallet. Not in his mm. normal wallet. He has none at all. I hope you're right, my darling. We'll so have too. him back. Have you noticed any little faults in, in your lad since you married him? Not a lot. Not a lot. No. Paul Daniel no. says that, not a lot. <laughs> well, here he comes, the perfect husband again. Alan, come back to us. Your first question is about jogging, which is a fairly popular form of exercise these days. Have you never even mentioned or thought about going jogging? Have you talked about it but never actually done it? Or have you actually gone out and tried a little jog? Tried a little jog. Tried a little jog, that's lovely. <laughs> 
Down the canal, she said. That's right. After you've dried your hands on the towel in the bathroom, do you just throw the towel down anywhere? Do you fold it fairly neatly and put it back over the towel rail? Or do you just sort of toss it over the towel rail in a mess? What does she say? I fold it over. Fold it over neatly. <laughs> this one worried her a wee bit. It, it, we, we're talking about photographs, family photographs in your wallet. Now, she said in your normal wallet, whatever that means, do you have just one photograph? family photograph? Do you have more than one? Or didn't you think you had any at all at the moment in your normal wallet? Not a family photograph. Not a family photograph, that's the answer. Hey, we're halfway through a jackpot. That's lovely. A couple from home near Carnforth are halfway to that thousand pounds. We're going to take the break, let them worry for another 30 seconds or so. We'll be right back, so don't go away. It's very exciting. Hey, that's great. Warm enough for you, Sid. When you're shaping up to a thirst... You're done. Carly. Thirst-shattering flavour. When there's a greasy stain about, don't soak that stain out. And when there's rubbed in grime about, don't scrub that grime out. Shout it out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shout it out. Shout it out. Shout it out. Mm Shout Soil and Stain Remover penetrates even the toughest greasy stains and grime. No soaking, no scrubbing. Just spray and wash. See? Cleaner than washing powder alone. So keep some shout about and shout it out. Shout it out. The Johnsons work together to make a great team. And Mrs. Johnson has another team to look after the wash. It's Mrs. Johnson, her Hoover Electronic 1100 and Purcell Automatic. Her Hoover has three different spin speeds to suit every kind of fabric, right up to 1,100 spins a minute for a dryer wash. And Purcell Automatic is designed to give you the best results. Across all temperatures and for all fabrics, coloured things and white things too. Look, really clean and white. Whites come up whiter. Warm wash coloured and synthetic things cleaner and brighter. Purcell Automatic is tested and approved by Hoover and the makers of all these machines. So you, your automatic and Purcell Automatic make a winning team that keeps the whites right. This woman was married to the most evil man on earth. I gave up everything for Idi Amin. I was his wife for 11 years. Exclusive in tomorrow's Daily Mirror, she reveals her own sensational story. Over the years, I saw him change from kind, thoughtful man into a brutal killer. She tells of his womanizing, his other wives, and how he took their six children from her. It's the story of a man who became a monster. The real Idi Amin story, starting in the Daily Mirror tomorrow. Safari. Safari. Explore Windsor Safari Park. And Safari SeaWorld, starring Windsor's famous performing dolphins. And Britain's only killer whale. Enjoy a great day out exploring Windsor Safari. You'll see more wild animals than ever before at Windsor Safari Park. Welcome back to Mr and Mrs. We've got Alan and Connie Hallhead from home near Carnforth and they're halfway, as you know, to our £1,000 jack. But funny, Connie was saying you didn't have many faults, Alan, but on my little note here, she put on the entry form that your worst fault is that you are never wrong. Yes, that's what she always said. That's what she always said. This is the one time in your life when you want never to be wrong, isn't it? You want to, you've got to get all these three right for us. Please do that. Your first question. Does your wife ask you to help her with the zip fastener on her dresses regularly, only very occasionally, or never? Regularly, only very occasionally, or never. What is she going to say? Occasionally. Occasionally she helps you. Yes. With which of these men would your wife prefer to be cast away on a desert island? This is a tough one. Would it be Robert Redford? Would it be Roger Moore? Or would it be Des O'Connor? All those three lads are waiting anxiously now to hear who Roger they... Moore. Roger Moore, double old seven. Oh, he would rescue her, wouldn't he? <laughs> That's right. Get his helicopter or something. If your wife was buying some sweets to eat 
at the cinema or theatre? Would she prefer chocolates of some kind? Would she prefer toffees of some kind? Or some mints of some kind? What's her favourite sweet if she's going to the cinema? Something to chew while she's watching the film? Roger Moore. Chocolates. She likes her box of chocks. Yes. Right. Mm. How are you feeling about those? Well, I don't know. Really. You don't know? <laughs> no. Well, you're it's... never wrong. She said you're never wrong. <laughs> Tony, we're just joking about you saying he's never wrong. And this is the one time he should never be wrong. And don't you be wrong now. Three questions from a thousand pounds. Do you ask your husband to help you with the, the zip fastener on your dresses? Never. You know, you never, absolutely never ask him. Do you ask him very regularly or occasionally? Occasionally. That's the word. <laughs> oh. Two questions from a thousand pounds. This one we're a bit worried about, Connie. Which of these men would you prefer to be cast away with on a desert island? Did he say Roger Moore? Did he say Des O'Connor? Or did he say Robert Redford? Roger Moore, Des O'Connor, Robert Redford. Who do you fancy? Des O'Connor. Oh. <laughs> oh, Dimples Des will be delighted. <laughs> but we're not delighted because he oh, said dear. 007 with oh. Roger Moore. Hard luck, my dear. You're buying some sweets to eat at the cinema or the theatre. Do you prefer to have some toffees of some kind, some mints of some kind, or some chocolates of some kind? Chocolates. Chocolates. <laughs> he said that as well. Oh, so near again. Five right. Roger Moore and Des O'Connor let us down today. You've won 50 pounds, though. I've got another 50 to go with it if you'd like to chance your luck at my little... Yes. Five pound chance. You stake five pounds of yours on this question. Who was the famous Frenchman who used to say to his lady, not tonight, Josephine. Oh, oh, oh. Napoleon. Napoleon's another 50 pounds, yes. <laughs> Marvellous, well done. Here's our Susan. Well, you doubled your money there in one little go. You've got 100 pounds, you've got your lovely silver clock. It's been a pleasure to see you, and many more happy years of married life, and keep on climbing, keeping fit. There we are, Thank from home near Concord. So near, Tony and Alan. Five questions right and just that one wrong. It seems that we're fated not to get a jackpot winner. But let's open the curtains one more time. It's still there, £1,000. We have one more couple. Let's hope they can win it. Let's meet them now. Well, we've got Mr and Mrs Thompson from Gateshead. They've been married for 34 years. They have seven children and Mr Thompson is a warehouseman. Winnie and Lev. Hello, Winnie. Hello, Les. Great to see you. Nice to have you with us from Gateshead. <laughs> Some of my relatives come from over there, so we're oh, all yes. pals together. Good You're time. only a little one, aren't you, Wynne? Yes. How tall are you? Five foot. Five foot. Good stuff in little bundles. Good yeah. stuff in little bundles. <laughs> <laughs> choose us an envelope. We'll blather as we go along. Who's going to choose this one? Les, your right. choice. That's fine. You. Now, you made a little bit of history a few years ago. Well, when you got married, didn't yes. you? Yes. Tell us about that. A couple that. of years after we were married, yes. Uh, we uh, ended a competition uh, as the... Uh, Shortest courting couple in the in the country. Yes. And How long uh, were you courting then before uh, you actually got married? A fortnight, married? actually. A fortnight. <laughs> Went out one night together. One night together, and you got married. And, and it's lasted thirty-four beautiful. years, and we're still courting. <laughs> ah, that's yeah. nice, isn't it? That's still lovely. Courting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's the, the shortest courtship we've had on Mr. and Mrs. I just wonder whether anybody at home watching. Has, uh, was courting for less time than a fortnight. We might get a flood of letters, so I'll let you know whether your record stands. Blue sheet of paper on top. Let's stay with me. Winnie, go and relax in our little box. We'll separate you for a couple of minutes now. And Les, we would really like this thousand pounds to be won today. Our last couple got ever so near, didn't they? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Let's try it, and the best of luck for you. Has your wife ever taken part in a play since you were married? Oh, sorry, no. If so, was it since you were married? Was it before you were married? Or has she done both? Has she ever taken a part in a play that you She's know of? She's never taken a part. Not in a serious play? Not, not either play. before or since you're married? Right, never. Uh, where does your wife generally trim her toenails? What a question. Does she do them in the bathroom, the bedroom, the living room? Where? In the living room. In the living room. Our little things fly all over the place, don't they? I pick them up. Do you? Oh, that's lovely. He's a, he's a toenail collector, this fellow. <laughs> if your wife is having a bit of fish, which of these would she prefer? Some cod, some place, some soul, some haddock? 
What's her favorite? Some haddock. She's going to have a piece of haddock. Oh, I hope you're going to agree. Susan, let's have our lassie back here. What about your hobbies, then? Uh, I'm an amateur photographer mm -hmm. and uh, a backyard gardener. Oh, that's lovely, yeah. <laughs> and he had seven children, didn't he? Seven children. So you have plenty of them to take photographs yes, of, yes, haven't you? Yes, Winnie, the best of luck, my darling. Have you ever taken part in a serious play? And if so, was it before you were married, since you were married, or have you never done that? Never done it. Never done that? <laughs> Where did he say you generally trim your toenails? Now, he knew the bedroom, the living room, the bathroom. Where do you do them? The bedroom. Oh, Winnie. He said in the living room because he picked them up. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite fish from these, if you're having a bit of fish? Some plaice, some sole, some haddock, some cod? Haddock. Yeah, off you go. Off you go in there. Oh, that was hard luck, wasn't it? Eh? He seems so sure about the living room. Do you ever do them there? No. No? <laughs> 34 years and he's missed that out. With the p price of petrol increasing, as it is at the present, uh, and, you know, being in short supply as well, is your husband in favour of some form of petrol rationing, would he say? Or does he think a reduction in the speed limit should be put into force mm. so that it would cut down petrol usage? Or does he think things should just be left as they are and sort themselves out? I think the speed limit should be... Cut good, the speed yes. limit down a bit. Now everybody would save a bit of petrol. That's true, isn't it? Which of you is best at saving money? You know, actually putting it away. Are you the best one at saving it, your husband? Or are you both about the same? Him. He's the saver. Right. And your third one. If you complain to your husband that you had a bad back one day, would he offer to massage it for you? Or would he tell you to have a hot bath? Or would he say, go and see the doctor? Go and see the doctor. Go and see the doctor, right. Well, you feel happy with those? Yes. Good lad. Good lad. <laughs> what about your hobbies? He tells us about gardening and photography. What do you do? Painting by numbers. <laughs> Painting by numbers? How long have you been doing that? Oh, quite a while now. Do you find it relaxes you? Yes. That's nice. Works. Well, relax now because it's Les's turn to face the music. <laughs> Les, with the price of petrol increasing and with petrol being in short supply, would you like to see some form of petrol rationing? Do you think things should just be left as they are to sort themselves out? Or do you think a reduction perhaps in the speed limit would be a sensible thing to say? Like you see, petrol ration. You think it should be rationed? Yes. Oh, dear, she yes. said no, you would just like to cut the speed limit and everybody would save a bit of petrol. Who's the best at saving money in your family? You, your wife, or both about the same? Uh, I am. Yes, you said that. Mind you, you'll need to save a bit of money if, if photography is your hobby. Yes. Because it's well, quite expensive, it's, uh, films and It's the only uh, thing I spend my little mm -hmm. bit of pocket money on. What did you used to do before that? I used to keep a, a more expensive hobby, uh, racing pigeons, you know. Yeah, that's a good sort yeah. of northeastern pastime, isn't it? But they are expensive to keep now. They're all they? very expensive today, yeah. though, yeah. Well, you've got another ten pounds waiting for you. Here you come. If your wife complained to you one morning, she got out of bed and said, Oh, Les, I've got a bit of a bad back. Now, what would you do? Would you tell her just to have a hot bath? Would you suggest that she should see the doctor? Or would you get, say you would massage it for you? I'll repeat those now. Have a hot bath, tell her to go and see the doctor, or offer to massage it. I would it. suggest you see the doctor. That's the safest thing. That's lovely. 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Well, I often say if you're going to get one right, it's safer to get two right, Les, and then you don't argue about That's it after. Right. But you've done ever so well. Not a jackpot, unfortunately. Are you going on? I can produce my... Fifty pounds once again. Yes, yes. You're going to yes, try for it. Five pounds at stake. Here is the question. Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg Gotha, Gotha married a famous lady in 1840. Prince Albert married a famous lady in 1840. What was the lady's name? Queen Victoria. Like a flash, Queen Victoria. <laughs> and there's another fifty pounds. <laughs> That's lovely. And here comes our Susan. Well, you've got 90 pounds to take away with you. What are you going to do with it? Have you decided? Well, we, we'll share it. It'll go towards a nice holiday, won't yes. it? Thank there you are, my loves. There's your clock. Thank you. There's your 90 pounds. Thank Could you. we say thank you very much? Thank Lovely you. to see you. Thank From Gateshead, ladies and gentlemen, our third Mr. and Mrs. Susan, you have added to that suntan again, haven't you? Where have you been since we saw you last? Oh, only to America. Only to America. <laughs> this girl nips all round the world. Well, it's gorgeous. And your lovely green dress. That's Are you right. going to say goodbye to everybody? Yes, as always. Take care. And from me, don't forget, a thousand pounds again next week. See you then. Be nice to each other. God bless everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>
Look out for the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Quiz Book, written by Derek Beatty to follow closely the format of his long-running program. The Mr. and Mrs. Quiz Book is in your bookshops now, priced 75 pence. Programs for Sunday evening on ITV begin at 7.15 with BJ and the Bear. Hi. Hi. How far are you going? Going to New Orleans. But I'll take you as far as you want to go, or just part of the way, whatever you want. That won't be necessary. But there's plenty to laugh about at 8.15 with the comedians. My first wife died eating poison mushrooms. And... <laughs> Second one died of a fractured skull. She wouldn't eat the mushrooms. <laughs> At nine, after the news, Tropic. The first episode of a new series by Leslie Thomas, based on his best-selling novel, Tropic of Ryslip. The series takes a saucy look at life in the suburbs. At 9.30, Screenplay, another new series, begins with a play called Gossip from the Forest, about the armistice agreement in World War I. This is the forest of Compiègne, in a railway siding. The saloon car for them is one which belonged to Napoleon III. Excellent. A new look to Sunday evening programmes here on ITV. When you've discovered for yourself that coffee tastes nicer with Coffee Mate, all you've got to do is remember. Mmm, I remembered. Coffee tastes nicer with Coffee Mate. To cook a great Spanish omelette, Chop onions and potatoes before frying. Uh. This can be somewhat distressing. Or you could use Campbell's new omelette mate, packed with delicious natural ingredients. Just add to the eggs, whisk, cook, and it's ready. Campbell's new omelette mate in three varieties, mushroom, tomato, bacon, and ham, and Spanish, for great omelettes without tears. Tastes delicious, too. Soft X is so soft, you've got to squeeze it to believe it. It's the softest ever toilet tissue. Soft X. Soft X. Soft X. Soft X, the softest ever toilet tissue. Mmm, it's baby week. Yes, it's baby week in the, whoops, sun. Who's Britain's bonniest baby? Join the sun search and maybe yours can have a howling success. <laughs> Win a £500 nursery. Win Chirping Woodstock, Syndico Baby Bouncers, Baby Buggies and Baby Walkers in the sun. Read the heartwarming stories of couples who've had babies after years of thinking they never could. And who's this? See the stars when they were just little twinkles in the sun. When you're in the sun all day, find out what to wear for a night on the town. And a little later, feel a little sexy in this little number from the sun. Watch out, girls, for Hollywood's wild, wild lovers. And who's Britain's most kissable man? An expert jury decides in the sun. Barry Sheen writes for the bike generation, and there are six Kawasaki's to win. It's all in your bright and bouncy, sweet and saucy, number one sun this week. Thank goodness some humans really appreciate their food. They understand that we cats are finicky. I insist on my life's cat food. It's so delicious and full of only really choice ingredients. Today I think I fancy bum 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 tuna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can hardly wait. Oh, thank you, Mum. Thank you, Nine Lives. Shouldn't all cats have nine lives? Well, you bet. At 6.45, we go to Christchurch Priory for Come Sunday. Now, Colonel Hume goes searching for God. Your Eminence, two years ago you published a book with the title Searching for God. Have you found him yet? Well, perhaps I ought to explain the reason why the book was called that. It was a series of conferences given to monks and 
in the rule of St. Benedict.